So in this lesson, I'm going to go over some of the basics of creating hair for characters using Maya's XGen. So we'll start off with this character here, and we're going to create some head hair for him. So as I went over in some previous lessons, you know, the first thing you want to do is create an emitter object. So yes, you can grow the hair out of the geometry for the character's head and body, but I prefer to create a copy of that and delete all the extra faces I don't need and apply some Lambert shaders to all the emitter objects and then uh, create a new XGen description. So I'm going to go in here under descriptions create description and it's very important as I've mentioned before to name things properly let me use the character name and what location the hair is on and in this case usually I just write hair at the end but here I'm just gonna write lesson and for head hair because it's gonna be a bit longer and I want more control over the shape I'm going to use splines and generate primitives randomly across the surface and I'm going to control the primitives by placing and shaping guides so go ahead and hit create with the emitter object selected and you'll see we have a new description part of the existing hair collection that I'd already created and the first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and place some guides. So this icon here with a little plus sign and a guide allows you to add and move guides. So let's just start with that. With the emitter selected, I click down that icon and I can just place a few guides. All right, so let's take a closer look at these guides. They're basically like NURBS curves. You have your CVs, and you can hit F8, go into component mode, and start moving them around, shaping them. So what you want to do is create your basic shapes. I'm just going to kind of play around with this. Let's say that's the shape I want. Now, if I want the rest of these to have a similar shape, it's very easy to just right click on this guide that I've shaped, click on copy guide, and I can even select multiple of these other guides and paste guide shape. So already I've got a nice starting point for these curves and then I can go in and, and customize them further but um, tools like that just really help to speed up the workflow. Now that these guys are placed, whenever I add new guides, the new guides are actually going to look at the closest existing guides and interpolate to create a new shape. So it'll be somewhere between the shapes of these closest guides that are already on the head. All right, let's go over some of these parameters. Let's start in the primitives tab. So um, we'll generate primitives randomly across the surface. So we'll leave that as it is. And now you can see it created a preview. So these orange lines are my guide curves. These are the ones that I'm shaping to create the look of the hair. And then these thicker shaded curves are actually the preview. So I can turn the preview off using this uh, closed eye icon or I can generate a preview and this gives you a better idea of what the hair is going to look like with all of these parameters uh, applied. So let's go over some of that. So here I can control my density. I can bump that up to five. You can see there are more hairs. So I can leave it at one for now. 
and there are a lot of parameters that can be controlled by painting masks. So let's say in this case, uh, this is the density mask. So you can use expressions like this, or you can create a map. So let's create a map. This is going to be a p-tex texture. So I like to start my maps off black, black being uh, where there's no effect, meaning there will be no hairs, so zero density. And I like to give the maps a proper name, so this will be density mask. So this is all really important, as I've mentioned before in other lessons, all of the folders that are created for XGen, because XGen stores all of this data in, in a kind of a complex folder structure. So each of these things will be named according to the names that you use here. So you want to name it something specific so that just by looking at the name you can tell what it's used for. That'll help you out a lot later on. Let's go ahead and create that. So I created a black mask. And the reason I do that, you know, then I, it put me into paint mode with just Maya's regular 3D paint tool. So the reason I do that is because I want to paint where there's going to be hair growing as opposed to trying to paint out the areas where I don't want hair to grow because sometimes the 3D paint tool can be a bit imprecise so it can be hard to kind of paint things down to black uh, after the fact. So, but you know, it works either way. It's just I found that this way is a bit cleaner. So go ahead and paint this. Just very roughly. You can just paint in like white for the areas where I want hair to grow. Let's undo that. And we can change the brush size. Sometimes I've noticed when you get closer to the edge, if you paint there, um, sometimes it just fills the whole object. It's kind of an annoying uh, feature. So usually, if you just paint it a little smaller, yeah, maybe not that small, then you can avoid that. It happens all the time. Okay, and while we're at it, let's take a look at the UVs on this um, scalp emitter object. So this is very important to have proper UVs on here. So let's say we're happy with that. So you can also um, use like blurring and smearing to soften the edges if you want. And let's say we're happy with that. I'll probably clean up around here a bit more. Well, okay, let's go ahead and just do that. Let's paint some of this black. So this way I can define his hairline. Okay. So once I'm done painting for the moment, I can just click on this little disk icon over here and save the map. I can close this. Now anytime I want to start painting on a map again, all I have to do is click on this paintbrush and I can continue painting on it. Okay, so uh, in another lesson I'll go over some of these expressions, but for now let me just go over some of these basics. So here you can choose a primitive type. In the case of like longer hair like this, we would generally want to use splines. 
but maybe for other uses sometimes you may want a different type of geometry like cards especially maybe if you are trying to create some real time hair can be a good way to do that but there are a lot of different options for the types of geometry <clears throat> had to undo that because it got rid of the uh, changes I'd made to the hair. Okay, so now we have our modifier CV count. So I'll get into that later in the lesson, but this is just telling XGen how many CVs to use when applying modifiers. So when I apply modifiers like noise, a lot of times I want there to be more CVs than the number of CVs that I'm uh, sculpting the guides with. <clears throat> so I can increase that to let's say like 15. It'll make a little more sense later on why we would do that. So similarly I can create maps or just have one value for the length. So this means that it's 100% the length of what the guide curves are giving us. If I just want to take the whole thing down by half You'll notice that the guide curves didn't change. They're still the same way that they were when we created them. But this parameter, putting it down to 0.5, made each of the hairs that are generated, that we're seeing in this preview, half the length. So let's bump that back up to 1. So that can be a nice way if you just want to take down the length overall. And here's our width value. So here's a width ramp which basically has the root on one side and the tip on the other. So what we can do is take the width of the tip of the hair all the way down and create a nice smooth curve over here. And so now you can see these hairs uh, have a nice taper at the end and they taper down to a point. And we can even take the width of the hair down further. So you'll notice that the guide stays the same, but this is why previews are so helpful because all of these other parameters are only going to be seen when we actually render it or using this preview. So here we have a few other options. We can taper things down using this parameter as well. We can control the taper here. Uh, another really cool option is uh, in this section here for guide tools, I can select a few guides and rebuild. So let's say I want to rebuild the same shape, but I notice that I need more CVs. So I'll select the guide curves I want to affect and type in the number of CVs. So now you can see it's more curved. And there are more CVs on here. Generally, I try to keep the CV count as low as possible. And the main reason for that is that it's easier to shape these guides when there are less um, CVs on them. And then you can always rebuild the curves once you've gotten that basic shape. Now, another cool feature here, I'll show you on uh, this curve. It'll be easier to see. So let's say I've shaped this curve like this and if you can see these CVs here some are very far apart from each other some are closer so one nice uh, feature here is normalize so just selecting this I can just normalize and in this case because I had so few CVs it actually changed the shape so we might want to do let's rebuild it first with let's say 10 CVs Okay, so now we have more CVs in here. And then we can normalize it. And what that does, which I think rebuilding already had done that, but normalizing basically um, puts all of these CVs at equal distances from each other. And here I can specify a length. So I can actually change the length of the guide 
let's say 0.4. So this is specifying the actual length in units. So that can also be pretty useful. I haven't really used to groom. But okay, region masks are really great. Maybe I'll go over some of these um, on the actual hair that I've created. So, all right, so this gives you a basic idea of just how to create curves and how to move them. Let me show you how to move them around, actually. So I can select this guide here and click on the Add or Move Guides button. And holding down Control, I can click at the base of this hair and actually move it to a different location. So this can be really helpful. Like at times you might find that even just moving a guide just a little bit away from where it is will give you better interpolation. So if you have some weird things going on with the uh, hairs due to interpolation, uh, sometimes you can fix that just by moving these guides around. And I'll show you a more kind of clear example of that. Okay, so this was just like a little test that I had started just to show you how to get started, but let me show you uh, a groom that I had already created. So let's just take a look at these curves first. So these guide curves. Take a look at them. They don't have too many CVs. So like maybe four. Just enough to get that basic shape. But you'll see there are a few things I did. I'm going to hide the model here so that we're just looking at the emitter so it's a little bit easier to see. But you'll see that you know around where the sideburns are, I created some shorter uh, curves, guide curves. And one of the things that I did was on the parts that are more symmetrical, such as the hair in the back of the head, I just created one side. And then I used mirror selected guides across the x axis to then create these ones on the other side. Now, we were just looking at this section here where there's a region mask. So, what's this for? So, interpolation is pretty cool because it allows you to use fewer guides to create uh, like an interesting hairstyle. But there are times where you want to kind of break that interpolation, such as here, where we have the hair parting. So I'll show you the preview just so you can see. But at the part here, we want the hairs on one side of the part to go towards this side, and these hairs to go on the other side. Now, if we don't use a region mask, it'll kind of fan out. You'll see like interpolating hairs in between here and that's really not what we want. We want the hair to actually split here and go in two different directions. So the way that we do that within one hair def description is with the region mask. So in this case we can paint it. So one, we have like a region mask, which we can actually set to one, which would just tell us that we're using the region mask over the entire emitter object. Uh, in this case, I have a map for the mask as well. And the reason for that is so that I can control where I want the region mask to be used. So in some places, I just wanted to use this regular interpolation. And so just in, in kind of problem areas that come up, you can paint in a region mask. But in this case, I'm not really doing anything with that. So just put that to one. And let's look at our region mask. That basically using different colors defines the different sections of this hair description uh, where interpolation will occur. So all the guide curves that are under this red section are going to interpolate with each other. 
and all the guides that are in this green section will interpolate with each other but not with the ones in the red. So um, when you paint this again same 3D paint tools but in this case I would just use the flat brush over here and for the color I tend to just stick to these uh, colors these default colors on top because it's just an easy way to keep it consistent and keep using the same colors so you know later on if I want to add to the red section it's easy for me to just choose the same red or the same yellow over again so unless you have more regions than what you see here now we just stick with using these colors right here okay so what else have we got so guide animation I can go over maybe in another lesson if people are interested I can go over hair dynamics how do you make the hair move basically but in this lesson I'm just gonna stick to how to create the hair and displacement is more for if you have a displacement map that's affecting the emitter object then you'll want to place that same displacement map in here. Culling is really useful. So there are times when you may have a few hairs in here that are just doing the wrong thing. And so you want to get rid of them. So I can enable culling. And there's a button in here that lets me actually select these uh, hairs so these hair primitives, so this button, the second last button here, select primitives. With that, I can go in and let's say I don't want these hairs in here. So I can select them. And because I have enable culling checked, I can now call selected primitives. And so just those hairs will be removed. So it's kind of a way of just plucking out certain hairs. So later on, let's say, you know, I, I change my mind about some of these, I can display the hairs that have been called and I can select them and then actually um, like uncall them if I want to and then there are also other options like you can create expressions so I'll go over expressions in another lesson but this is some of what makes XGen so powerful is the use of these expressions but I feel like that should be a separate lesson in itself okay so that's the primitives tab preview that lets us define parameters related to this hair that we're seeing um, we can generate a hundred percent of the hairs we can do fifty percent if we want to just to speed things up and you know you can control the guide color here and the spline segments that we see in, in our preview so if this is too faceted like here I can just bump this up bump it up to two or if I want more I can bump it up to three and so output settings we can actually output to create guides we can create a baked kind of hair file we can create geometry or in this case, I just want to render this the way that it is. So you have a lot of really interesting options here. So let's say that you created hair, and later on you decide that you want to create guides based on the number of hairs. So you want to create a guide for each one of these generated hairs. So you can actually do that. And in some situations, it can be useful. For the most part, you're just going to use render over here and you can choose different renders if you have different renders installed and the advantage of that of actually setting the render over here is that if that render has any additional parameters specific to it they'll show up here so like if I have redshift or mental ray or any other render then set it here and you'll see those extra parameters show up here so in addition to that we have the primitive bound which usually I'll just click on auto set and what that does is it's basically looking at your hair and kind of creating the bounding area 
so that when it renders, it can render more efficiently. So if you do see hair clipping and you know, not rendering properly, like sections of it just clipping off, all of a sudden you may want to check out this primitive bound. Either click auto set to set it again, or you can type in a value. All right, so these are Arnold specific parameters. So I won't go over these right now, but let's go over to modifiers. So these are really great. I'm going to turn these off just so we can see what this hair looks like without them first. So it basically just follows the guides. Now when I add clumping, uh, well actually let's create these from scratch. Delete these and let's create a new modifier. So we have a whole bunch of different modifiers here for different purposes. The main ones that I end up using the most are clumping and noise. Uh, but each of them you know, does interesting things. Mesh cut is pretty cool. You can actually have a piece of geometry. Uh, so let's say you know, like the back of the hair is really messy. Then sometimes, what I'll do sometimes with the interpolated hairs, you get hairs of all these different lengths and you just want it to be nice and neat. So what I'll do is create a piece of geometry and use this mesh cut and then specify that piece of geometry and it'll actually cut that portion of the hair that falls within that geometry. And then you can bake that out. But let's start, usually I'll add a clumping modifier first. And the first thing that I'll do is set up maps. Now in this case, I'm going to set up maps based on the guides. But we have a few different options. So let me just give you an idea of what they are. So if I click on generate, it's looking at this density value and uh, placing at kind of equal distances from each other these yellow curves. Let's just turn off the preview for a second so you can see them. So these uh, little guides are clumping guides that are being that are being created to specify where the hair will clump. But usually for the first clumping modifier that I create, I'll click on guide and you'll see that it created a clumping guide at every single hair guide. So I just clicked on guide to create that and you can also paint maps and things for this here. Um, you can kind of adjust the radius of these clumps so there'll be like a circle around this guide here and that will define kind of which hairs are clumped to this guide, which ones are actually attracted to it. But let's just use this guide, click Save, and now you can see all these hairs within this region are going straight to a point to each of these guides. So it's really easy to create that. So now let's control this a bit. Now if I wanted these clumps to not come to such a hard point, I can again just adjust this graph over here. So this is similar to what we saw for the width parameter. You have the root on one side and the tip on the other. So I can control how tight these clumps are. In addition to that, I can use a number to specify like a variation in the size of each of these clumps. And I can use this parameter, this clump parameter here to specify how strong the effect of the clump is. Is it 100%, which is a value of 1, or we want to use 0.5 to kind of loosen all of them. I can even paint a map for this by using create map over here or create expressions for it. So I'll just leave that at 1 for now. And clump volumize can, can sometimes give you a better look, sometimes not. 
so those are the main options that I use in here. I mean, there are a whole bunch of other parameters as well, but mostly I'm just giving you a simple overview. That's what I'll use just to create basic clumps. Now I can actually create a mask over here, which this can be very useful, creating a uh, clump mask map. Let's just, just call that clumping one mask. This is the clumping one modifier, meaning it's the first one. And again, I'll create it black, set the resolution at 15. And now let's paint white where we want it to have clumping. So usually I won't want clumping in the sideburns and maybe in the shorter hair. I want clumping to the guides in the longer parts of the hair. So let's go ahead and flood paint this black. All right, saying I don't have a texture assigned. So let's just click on save in here and then paint again. And there we go. So sometimes or often XGen can be finicky about painting maps. And so uh, usually I'll find that if I just click on the save icon and then come back to the paintbrush, that it'll work out just fine. So let's increase the brush size and I'm going to paint white. So I'm going to hide this, the preview. And here I'm not really worried about uh, painting in areas where, there, where the density map is actually zero. It doesn't matter because the density map is painted down black over here. So no hairs will grow here anyway. So I don't have to worry about that. I can just paint in these areas where I want this clumping modifier to have an effect. All right, so let's say that that's what I want. I'll click on save. And now you'll see that we're getting the effect of this clumping modifier only in the areas where I painted. And now I can also paint like other grayscale, darker grayscale values so that you get some clumping effect on these other areas or black for none at all. So now let's go ahead and add another clumping modifier. And what I'm going to do with this one, so the first clumping modifier, I use that to create clumps to these guide curves. Now I just want to create additional clumps that can maybe just break up these larger clumps. So that's why I've created another clumping modifier. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is set up maps. But this time, instead of setting them up using guides, I'm going to generate them based off of this density value. Now again, you can even paint masks in here to define kind of where these show up. But I just want them to show up overall over the entire emitter object. So let's say I want more clumps. I can regenerate this at any time. So you know this is definitely something that you can tweak after painting additional maps, after kind of seeing the effect of it. So now you'll see that I have all these smaller clumps in here. Again, I can adjust the tip and I can paint maps, additional maps like the clump mask and clump variants and stuff to adjust the size. Or you can just type in a number value. But so this this is very easy to control and to get these hairs to come to a nice tip like that. Okay, now I'll show you the noise modifier. So this is a great way to make the hair look a bit more organic and less perfect. So just applied a noise modifier on top of the clumping. And again, some of these parameters should look pretty familiar by now. There's a mask so you can paint in where the noise is affecting the hair or how much it's affecting different parts of the hair. You can do the same. I mean, you can create masks for all of these parameters, which is very, very powerful. It gives you a lot of control. But let's bring down this frequency value. 
So then you have noise kind of occurring like uh, more times along the length of the hair. I can increase the magnitude to so the overall uh, amount that the noise moves these CVs. And so you can start to see how much more organic and imperfect the hair can begin to look. Now, one of the really interesting and powerful features in XGen is being able to set stray percentage. So let's say I want 30%, so 0 0.3, 30% of the hair to be strays. So we'll put that in there. Now, right now, there's no effect at all. Okay, so I'll show you one expression in here that I just end up using very often. So if you go to the magnitude, now since we define 30 percent of the hairs as being strays, we can give those 30 percent of hairs a different value than the rest of them for any of these parameters just by typing in an expression. So if a hair is a stray, let's have the magnitude for this noise be 5. If it is not a stray, we'll let it just be 1. So now, 30% of these hairs is going to have a magnitude of 5, and the rest have a magnitude of 1. Now, let's just copy that expression into frequency so that 30% of the hair have a frequency of 0.2 and then the rest of them have a frequency of 1. So now if I increase the number like the percentage of hairs that I'm showing in my preview then I'll be able to see a little better. So let's look at the effect of noise without it and with it. So this just allows us to kind of break things up a bit more so that some of the hairs have more noise than others, we break up the clumping a bit in this way. Now obviously I've used kind of extreme values for the clumps, so that's why you're seeing all these spaces in between, but I just wanted to illustrate kind of what these modifiers do. So that should give you a pretty good idea. Now some other things that I would use in here. Grooming, there's nothing showing up in here because this is just if your description is a groomable spline. Like if you're using groomable splines like for short hair, or fur, things like that. Then you would see all those grooming tools for that. And then under utilities, there are a lot of useful tools. The ones that I've probably used the most so far are guides to curves and curves to guides. So sometimes you may have a bunch of NURBS curves that you want to create hair guides out of so you can just select those and click on curves to guides and it'll actually convert them to guides and try to place them on the closest point on this emitter object. Now, going the opposite direction, I can also take these guides and convert them to curves. So here you can see it simply hid the guide, and now this is just a regular NURBS curve. So I can take advantage of any tools that Maya has for working with NURBS curves, make changes any way I want, and then convert it back to a guide or you know use it for other purposes. So I haven't really used a lot of these other tools but I'm sure I mean there's a lot of other great stuff in here that is definitely worth exploring. And here we have expressions that you can define and then plug in to different slots if you want to reuse the same expression in several places. But I'll go over expressions in another lesson. So those are some of your basic guide uh, hair kind of creation tools and methods. Let's open up another file.
and just kind of give you an idea of what this hair would look like normally. All right. So here we have this other file. And in this case, the first thing that I tried to do was just create the minimum number of guides that I needed to get the hair to go in the direction that I wanted it to go in. After that, I started to play around with region maps, you know, adjusted the width of the hair, tapered it to a tip, at the tip and all that kind of stuff. I painted a density mask and stuff to define kind of where the hair grows on this emitter object. And after that, I started playing with clumping and noise to get a bit more control over the final look of the hair. So that's the basic workflow. And when you apply a hair material, you'll be applying that not to necessarily the emitter object, but under your hair collection for that particular layer, you'll find these hair patches. This is what you're going to assign your uh, hair shader to. So if I go to like hypershade, and depending on which renderer you're using, a lot of renders actually come with a hair shader that is specifically built for hair so it has like nice shading and things that can make the hair look really cool. So if you are using a render that has that, I would advise using the hair shader for it. So if we go in here, I'm using the Arnold renderer so I can just create an Arnold hair shader. And again, it's a good idea to name it something that makes sense. So I might do a character, a scalp, hair, material, just something that makes sense to you that you'll be able to recognize. Okay. So here, you know, you can adjust whatever parameters and things you need. But the main thing I want to show you is that when you're assigning this hair shader to your hair, assign it to these patches for that layer. That's what's actually going to get that material onto the hair. All right. So there we go. There you have it. character and so in terms of rigging I would simply do a wrap deformer and wrap this to your body or you can do like a copy skin weights and use that as well So that's it for this lesson. If you found it useful, feel free to subscribe so that you'll get all the lessons that I create. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them in the comments below. And if you're interested in other aspects of XGen that I've already gone over, there are several other tutorials that I created on XGen. So thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, bye.